All right, so out of all those shots that we took, I just went through all of them and finally, I just selected and filtered out these uh, four shots in which you know, we were able to cover everything from left to right. So if I just open up these shots, you will be able to see that properly. So this was, remember, the first shot uh, we took. By the way, you can see that vignetting here. Don't worry, we will get rid of this soon. Uh, but you can see this left part of the flower was very sharp in this. And then we kept moving towards the right. So let's see the second shot. Keep your eyes somewhere here. Just, oops, I'm pressing the wrong button, actually. So remember, this is the first shot and second. So can you see now this time, this part was absolutely sharp. Okay, rest, everything is blur. And now the third shot, which was beautiful because this was right for everything in the center. So this looks really good. Uh, no, actually, this was not still the center, the third shot. Okay, let me just start again. First shot, second shot. Third was for, yeah, just the inside part of the center. And the fourth, the last shot that we saw basically covered everything. And remember, we were slightly struggling for the extreme, right? And I found it's okay. It's perfectly fine. Even this looks uh, pretty sharp. So it was able to get the, uh, you know, inside it, inside the depth of field. So again, so let's just see it one more time. Two, three, four. Now we are going to open all these four images inside Photoshop and we will focus tag them so that we get one image which is sharp from left to right. So let's do that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I have opened up Photoshop and I'm going to go to File and I can go to Scripts and then I can Select this option which says load files into stack. Okay, then I can click on browse and select basically those four images. So I'm gonna select all four of them, click on okay. And what this basically does is, is just, you know, instead of me having to open each image and then aligning them on top of each other layer wise, it's just gonna do this in one step. So you're gonna see in one window, we're gonna get basically all layers. By the way, if you're seeing Photoshop for the first time, this all might slightly be confusing. Don't worry about it right now. If you're seeing Photoshop for the first time, first of all, I have Photoshop courses like I mentioned before. Uh, but secondly, the point right now is not that you exactly follow this technique. You should just know that this is done if you're seeing Photoshop for the first time, okay? So don't exactly worry about what I did. You can learn Photoshop uh, later on. So we have these four layers basically, that is images aligned on top of each other. So you can see if I hide this, 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 and this, okay? So I'll figure before below that is just the uh, background so you can see you've got these four images now first of all immediately when i even if i just hide this and show you the underneath one you can immediately see that remember i told you that when we were shooting there was a little that focus breathing thing going on which just moves you know uh, the shot a bit so it's not aligned properly right now so before we can go into the uh, focus stacking process what we need to do is that will only work once these images are aligned properly so what we can do is if I just hold down control and if I select all four, okay, then I can click on edit. I can go to auto align layers. So if I just click on it and then just select auto, we don't really need to do anything manual here. So click on okay. And what Photoshop will do is it'll just see all the four images and it'll just pile them together in such a way that they're exactly on top of each other. Now the downside of doing that, as you're gonna see, is you can straight away notice here that we will lose out some of the area okay that's it it will just get cropped so whatever you're seeing outside this first square we basically won't be able to use okay that's because there was the movement you can even see some of the background being seen here okay so what we will do here is we will just uh, crop this later on we can do that later but right now what we'll do is we'll just first of all focus stack uh, this image because now it is aligned properly. So whenever you focus stack anything, like if, if you've done my landscape photography for beginners course, this step is always done, okay? So that you align them first. Then all of them are already selected. I can go to edit. And again, even this focus stacking option is just under the auto align layers option. It's called auto blend layers. So I'm gonna select this and we're gonna choose this option which says stack images. What's gonna happen when I click on okay is it'll start a rendering process and what basically it's going to do is it's going to see which like for example it'll go through this image it'll go through the entire image and its algorithm is smart enough to see which are the sharp areas that means which is what is in focus and what is out of focus so from this image for example it'll only keep the left part and it'll hide the remaining image from then it'll go to the second image it's going to see the sharpest parts keep those hide the blurred so if it does that to all the images ultimately we're going to get one final rendered image which will be sharp from left to right okay so let's see this process so i'm going to click on okay 
And there were two options below that. Okay, just leave them checked. That seamless blending and all those things that you saw, you can just leave them checked. And this should happen quickly because we just have four images. Sometimes I focus stack over 10 images. So in those cases, it can take time. And also the images from phone are not as large. This process can be uh, a bit intensive on your computer if you're using those proper DSLR or mirrorless uh, images. And I often face that problem in landscape photography. Uh, if you've done my landscape photography or beginners course there, the rendering process is much slower than this though. <laughs> it's been quite some time and it's actually uh, still on it. So it's just a bit slow today. All right, so now it's just completed the process. So let's see what kind of job does it do. So you can see it says could not fill because there's not enough memory. So that's fine. Uh, what it's trying to say is that it has completed the focus stacking, but these areas which it was supposed to fill actually because we had that option checked. I did not talk about it. That option was checked under the stacking option when we were there. Okay, so that's okay. That's not a problem because we will crop this image anyway because we have a lot of vignetting. Otherwise, it would have just filled these empty areas. Okay, it automatically does that using its own algorithm and it does it pretty well. Okay, but right now it's not too important. What is important is, isn't this absolutely fantastic? Just look at this image. It's from left to right. It has taken up all those images. So let me just quickly tell you what is happening here in case you are slightly familiar with Photoshop. Because immediately when you see next to the thumbnail, this black and white thing, the first thing that should come to your mind is a layer mask. So what is happening here is that just next to the uh, image, it has put a layer mask and wherever you see black on the layer mask, that area is being hidden and wherever you see white, that area is being revealed from that image. That means the black part is the part in this image which was out of focus and white, since white reveals, is the area which was in focus. So you can see from this image, something like this, from this image, somewhere here and so on and so forth and finally, we get this one image. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give it a little crop first of all. So just zoom in slightly and we're going to get rid of this. That's why that fill thing is not too important right now. Okay, because anyway, we had to crop this to get rid of that black part. Though, though to be frank, if I was actually doing this, let's say for my own portfolio and this image was important to me, I wouldn't have even removed it. I would have actually used the content aware fill tool to automatically generate instead of the black space uh, using its algorithm, generate those flowers. That is also possible in Photoshop. Right now, I don't want to get so advanced into things. Uh, check out my Photoshop for beginners course. There, I cover the content aware tool also. Okay, so a lot of things can be done in Photoshop. Let me just push this slightly in. So I'm using a free crop. I'm not following any proportions right now. Main job is to just avoid that, okay? This is fine. Yes, we do lose a bit of the flower. That's okay. That's not such a big problem. Maybe something like just about here. Okay, I think this is fine. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to give it a crop. Let's just zoom in and see. And I think that is looking fabulous. It's re really, really sharp from left to right. I'm going to export this image, save it, and I'm going to compare it to not just one of the blurred images, just to see the difference uh, about, you know, what happens when you just take one image, let's say, because most people will just focus in the center. So first of all, we'll compare it with one of these images to see the difference. But also remember, we took an image from that normal macro mode also. That was the last shot that we took. I'm also going to compare this with that. Okay, so let's do this. All right, so this is the final output that I have got after focus stacking. And also, I took this image into Snapseed again, and I just made some very small adjustments and edited this shot just to get some colors uh, and more details out. Again, the editing part, I will exactly show you how I did all this, be exactly showing you this photo later on in the editing uh, section. But this was the edited shot that I got. Now, first of all, let's compare this uh, with one of the images that formed this, which let's say we could have also been happy with. So this is one of the images where we got that center part sharp and this is also an acceptable uh, image. Like if we were to crop this like this, this is not bad, but then again, the left and the right parts were not sharp enough. So this is okay if you just wanna take one shot or let's say right now you don't have Photoshop or you don't wanna get into focus stacking, you're saying, Kush, I just wanted this. That's also fine. I just showed you what is the maximum uh, possibility. So you can see like as this part is just too blurred out and that's the problem with macro photography. But when you focus stack, you just get everything uh, sharp. And if I zoom in also, you can see it looks really, really sharp. And because we are 
Now doing this with a 64 megapixel camera. So this is the advantage that even if I want to zoom in more and more, crop this more and more, I can easily do it because this is still acceptably sharp. I can even take a print out of this. This simply wouldn't have been possible with the other macro mode that this last shot that we took. And let, let's also see that shot. So can you see now the big difference? If you just were to use the built-in macro mode and use that five megapixel camera, just imagine this already looks good because you can't zoom in, zoom out there. You can't focus there. You can't change the exposure there. It's just a macro mode lens, okay? And if I zoom in here, remember it's only five megapixels. So it's really going to deteriorate as you can see here. First of all, it's not close to the sharpness that we got with that clip-on lens and with the main camera. So this is just absolutely not good enough. You can see here, right? So this is why it's very, very important that you use a clip-on lens and also, if possible, do focus stacking using your main uh, lens.